Hello, everyone. Welcome to Catalyst Energies. My name is Dee. Thank you for joining me. I'm so grateful that you are here. Welcome to the Starseed Ministry. Usually, we are streaming live on Monday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but as many of you probably already are aware of, I still have renovations and contractors in and out of my house. Um, They're going to be finishing so soon. So I'm recording the Starseed Ministry uh, in order to keep from the overlap, right, of them working and being live. So still the same information. I'm going to share a reading with you. We're going to do um, our reading for the solar eclipse that is happening tomorrow with our new moon in Scorpio. And I just appreciate everyone being here. So, uh, boy, a couple of announcements. First of all, before I really get into the meat of this uh, Starseed Ministry and the reading, we'll of course look at a little bit of the astrology. I, I just want to let everyone know that I usually do broadcast twice a week, Mondays and Fridays. I'm going to pull back and I'm no longer going to be broadcasting publicly on Fridays. I usually do the weekly astrology report on Fridays, streaming live, and I'm going to be pulling back and making that available to uh, my subscriber base and membership or make it available for one-time purchase through my website. Um, and so the Starseed Ministry is definitely going to be still available on all the platforms. It's going to be streaming live on YouTube every Monday morning uh, going forward, but I have to, I'm pulling back and I put a lot of content out there for um, very, very little in terms of a return or exchange. And I want to keep something uh, as my offering, as my gift, as my my stepping forward into service there and to allow people to easily find Catalyst Energies, find the Starseed Fellowship. But the astrology takes a lot of energy and a lot of time to put together. And so I'm going to be pulling that back and making it available only to the people that are actually willing to invest their resources into the process. And so if you are a person that's interested in that, you may want to get on my email list. You may want to check out my website because I'm going to start posting it uh, or at least posting it in terms of gaining access to that weekly report through my website. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, just know that the Starseed Ministry is not going anywhere. I feel very um, strong and passionate about keeping this ministry available uh, on all of the platforms and out there in a public forum in order to keep the conversation going, to provide some, like I said, my service to the community. So just wanted to put that announcement out there. So my friends, uh, we are coming up on a solar eclipse tomorrow with our Scorpio new moon. If you haven't checked it out already, I already posted the new moon forecast for the Scorpio sun, moon and rising people that is available on all of the platforms that you may be watching this broadcast on. So you can check that out. And of course, even if you're not a Strong Scorpio person. There's a lot of insight into the general themes that have to do with the new moon solar eclipse. Like I said, it's happening on the 25th. It's going to be very early in the morning here on the East Coast. So about 6 to 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S. And it's going to be in the very early degrees of Scorpio. And so even if you're not a strong Scorpio person, but you have maybe Pluto and Scorpio, right? The quote unquote millennial generation, or you have someone in your life who is a strong Scorpio and you want to get an idea how this whole eclipse cycle really is going to impact that person. That report is really worth a listen. So like I said, it's, it's on all of the platforms that you may be hearing this broadcast on. So, uh, The real takeaway, I feel like, for today's broadcast and for the reading that I'm going to be sharing is that we are... We are getting to the point now where um, we've already kind of made some decisions at a soul level. There are already steps that have been well put into place. And as we are now in our balsamic moon phase, meaning that we are back around to the point and definitely the sign that the new moon was in, which is in Libra, everything about this lunar cycle, right? We had our full moon in Aries, right? Conjunct Chiron. 
uh, Saturn has stationed direct over the weekend, okay, with this beautiful uh, superior solar conjunction with Venus and the sun coming into conjunction, Venus now traveling into the underworld, both Venus and the sun are now in the sign of Scorpio. So we've gone from the form of relationship, the holistic experience of, of knowledge, right? That we experience both sides of something in order to fully understand it, embodying that, being illuminated and sustained creatively by that. And knowing now that we're about to travel into the abyss of our own shadow, and this is going to reverberate not only over the next six months, because we are in a next eclipse cycle in the Scorpio Taurus axis, because this is where the nodes of the moon are, but just in general, with all of this Scorpio energy uh, diving into the abyss of ourselves, this is going to really mirror what's happening on the exoteric, the outside, right? The hologram that we're all part of and interacting, but it's also going to be part of what's happening intrinsically, internally, esoterically, and how we experience what is reflected in front of us is going to be a huge function of what is being experienced within ourselves. And the genie, you can't put it back in the bottle at this point. And there may be this kind of primal uh, survival instinct or mechanism that has us still kind of arguing with or almost attempting to justify through our mental sphere and our consciousness what we've already at a soul level have collectively decided upon. And that's okay, right? That's okay. And it's part of the process. It's like a cat arguing with the mouse, right? It's the idea that this dichotomy or this polarization that truly is meant to be integrated as part of a alchemical transmutational experience. Uh, the mind still is working in early cancer. And I bring this up because this is where Black Moon Lilith or the lunar apache is right now is in this degree of cancer in its retrograde, no less, that has to do kind of this justification that our mind is attempting with something that is very much embedded into the core of who we identify ourselves as and where we belong. And when we look at this reading today, we will see that what is under the surface and really giving us a sense of power is establishing who we truly belong with, right? Really knowing who our community actually is. And that's not to say, that we push away anyone else that doesn't fit into that bubble or fit into the nest, so to speak, but knowing who is in that nest, who is in that dome, so to speak, who is in that family is going to be really, really important moving forward because we are um, surely going to be broken open in many ways and it's in that root system that is going to, and, and the idea of the root system, the, the faith in a new root system that the seed that is embedded into the soil during Scorpio time, the faith that new growth is coming, that a new root system can be established. And maybe this is more about um, the root systems that are already in place in the ground that really do support the entire ecosystem, even if what we see on the surface is going through its destructive process. Um, the the Scorpio reading was very, very powerful. And in fact, one of the things that happened was that I recorded the whole thing without any sound because there was this tiny little thing that was maladjusted in my technical features that I had no idea. And this was a really good reminder, not only to really be atten attentive to the details in your life, they really do matter right now. And also to slow down, you know, to pay attention and to also broaden our perspective. The Libra energy at its, at its apex and certainly as it gets to the end of the sign, really that kind of mastery level at the 30 degrees of all signs. This is where Venus and the sun were in a conjunction at 30 degrees Libra is, is to have this 
bird's eye view or this transcendental realization that sees the whole picture. The real trick here, um, which I think is where Mercury is really going to be working in our favor as it's finishing up its transit in the sign of Libra, is how do we keep that perspective with boots on the ground? This is going to be the challenge for the star seeds in particular, okay? Yeah, I star seed, light worker, you're on mission, you're a truther, whatever it is. The real challenge and uh, the focus is in keeping that perspective while simultaneously having boots on the ground and being absolutely present for every part of this process, including how you're feeling, right? Because Scorpio is a water sign. It is fixed water. It is depth. It is power. And there is incredible power in our our emotional feels um, that establishes a resource that is more than we each bring into the picture. So when we go into the reading, it'll be um, so much more clear in terms of the imagery. So some people, and including myself, have experienced uh, some well, I would say have experienced, uh, you know, some body stuff over the weekend, body aches. I had a gnarly headache by the end of Saturday um, that all I could do really was just switch off and just sleep for a really long time. And it cleared up by the time Sunday morning rolled around for me. And sleep is still pretty much an issue for many people. Your dreamscape may be incredibly vivid um, as well. And that's because we were in and still in the middle of of a coronal hole stream. So solar wind is streaming at us from a hole in the sun's corona and the plasma that is coming in that solar wind interacts with the plasma in our own magnetosphere and causes all kinds of disruption. And we had solar storms um, and geomagnetic storms over the weekend. Now we do have sunspots, but they're really not doing too much, right? But there does seem these coronal holes are giving us the this direct stream of of plasma and solar wind that has elevated and something that did elevate which hasn't been happening very much uh, is that the Schumann resonance on Saturday elevated quite a bit it amplified quite a bit so that's something that I'm going to share with you uh, right now Okay, so what we see here is just the standard graph of the Schumann resonance and whenever it starts to come out in its color from the standard blue and gets lighter and lighter. Maybe there's some reds. You can see some yellows in here. This was on, uh, this was on Saturday. It amplified quite a bit up to 60 or 70. So the heartbeat of the planet for whatever reason, and there are lots of different reasons I feel like that this is the case, but we do know that there was solar wind, that there was geomagnetic unrest, and this has been happening without really much impact from the Schumann in, I'd say, in the last like month or so. But this one was pretty significant. And so if you were really getting the tones in your ears, incredible dreams, if you were feeling the impact in your body, there is a combination of this Schumann and then the geomagnetic unrest that I think was really having a strong impact. And like I said, Saturn, Station Direct this weekend, right? Mercury um, in Libra was in a um, was in a trine before this happened with with Saturn. And now um, Saturn has is, is moving direct. So we've talked about Saturn in Aquarius now for a while, especially in its retrograde because of the intense uh, the intensity of the collective consciousness or the resonance of the collective consciousness, you know, creating and interacting with our own bones, with our own scaffolding, with our own backbone or spine, and with that ancestral root system of time that Saturn ultimately regulates and rules. And so moving direct now, it's, it's, we're going to see now exactly what this has all been hopefully used for. And it really does depend on which version of Aquarius you are, you know, tapping into and aligning with. Are you tapped into the Borg or are you tapped into the higher consciousness that is outside of all of those technological modifications, all those technological 
uh, interventions, right? And this is a slippery slope. And this is a um, conversation I feel like ultimately con- needs to continue happening in terms of, you know, what is the benefit of technology? Um, do we get the benefit of technology without a consciousness that can, um, that, that can really manage higher levels of technology? Do is, is it a cheat code to get the med beds and things like that? Or is it, um, is it something that has been unnecessarily held back? There's, there is a lot of conversation that needs to happen. And this is the type of stuff that happens in the Starseed Fellowship. These conversations, these very raw and authentic and thoughtful, non-judgmental conversations. So Saturn moving direct now is really solidifying that inner crystalline structure that was developing and hardening right during the time of Saturn's retrograde. Now that it's direct, it's going to start being real evident what structure has really crystallized within our sense of determination, our focus, our authority, right? And, and the structure of time, right? The, the, the materium that unfolds and the resonance that is part of that. So, the thing that's very interesting is because Pluto is in Capricorn. It has been direct since the full moon in Aries. So the destructive mechanisms at the material level institutionally have already turned back on. And so what's interesting is how the consciousness can still be intact, how the crystalline structure can still be intact. Are we, are we, exhibiting some sort of piezoelectric impact, um, or are we just plugged into, um, a large server (laughs) of some sort that is just giving us, um, you know, the algorithm, the AI algorithm. So anyway, I'm, I digress. The point is here that the, the Schumann did have an amplification over the weekend. And so if you're feeling it in your body, you're feeling it in your dream state, you're feeling it in your sleep state, this got very loud, right? Just like when your heart starts racing um, and or your uh, feels start really influencing your expression, right? It gets louder, right? Your, your laughter or your sadness through, through, through crying or sobbing or your anger that comes through any kind of expression just gets louder. So something got very loud over the weekend. And then we had the geomagnetic disturbance on top of that, which is what I'm going to share with you right now. So you can see in, uh, the solar wind, right? This, the temperature, the purple here is the speed. Um, the density actually kind of dropped off and then maintained itself, strangely enough. But the phi angle flip, right, when you see the blue line kind of go from up to down to up to down, you know that there is also um, a disturbance in the stability of the magnetic field or the magnetosphere around our planet. And same that goes with this here, um, this the, uh, the BZ, when it drops down below zero and seems to be very um, erratic and moving very quickly or very drastically from a baseline, then you know that there is also the magnetosphere is, is doing that as well. And the ionosphere is the part of the atmosphere that is electrically charged or impacted. So if you're part of the catalyst classroom, you actually know all about this because that's what we discussed. And that's the material I presented is how to read all of this and what it means. So I'll give you some more information about that later. If you are interested in a membership uh, opportunity that allows you to study at your own pace this content um, that I'm providing on all manner of subjects, okay, that is from astrology to astronomy. Uh, in this case, we're talking about the sun, so astrophysics and stellar physics, but we're also talking about cosmology. We're talking about mythology. We're talking about um the occult as well and what that actually means and how that impacts us and where it's all going for our evolution. So we know that there is geomagnetic unrest and uh, the KP index also reflects this right on Saturday, Friday into Saturday, we had geomagnetic storm conditions. That's the red. And even yesterday, there was a little bit of elevation in this geomagnetic unrest and it's starting to uh, settle down now. So we'll see, right? We're still in this coronal whole stream, right? The solar wind is still passing Um into our magnetosphere and having an impact. So we're going to look now at the reading. 
because that's really the big, um, at least in my uh, experience here and in my read, is, is really the essence of the starseed ministry. And of course, we add in some of the astrology to ground it into a cosmic time clock and actual coordinates for potential. But this reading is pretty remarkable. So as they seem to all be, I don't know. Um, I can't take responsibility for these things other than being a conduit and being uh, open and grounded at the same time. So they come out as they come out, right? I don't necessarily pick the cards. I shuffle them. They pop out as necessary. And so sometimes things pop out in different positions. And in this case, in terms of our effect, <laughs> we got the devil and the tower reversed. The devil is upright. The tower is reversed. Um, and this is a chronology as well, because the devil card in the tarot is 15. The tower card is 16. So they go one after the other, right? The structures that the devil card represents the Capricornian structure of the materium um, is then followed by the destructive element of the tower card, right? That, that pulls down all of those structures that we had erroneously considered as state uh, static and infinite are torn down in order to tear down the illusion that the material world is in itself infinite, right? Because the only thing that's truly infinite is our own soul, which is our connection to spirit or divine creator or source. And the materium is um, another density of dimension or density of experience that we have come into in order to really perfect in some ways or evolve our way back to um, our connection to source through this material existence. And the lesson here is integration and transmutation. It's really the soul work of the third density. And as we are pulling back out of it based on our position um, traveling around the galaxy, we are bringing those lessons with us as our soul evolves as we go through our quote unquote ascension. But as you can see here, this is a pretty tall order to have the devil and the tower card reversed. And when it's reversed, it really does suggest uh, either in, in this case, a lot of resistance and um, maybe a unnatural destructive element. And with these eclipses right here, I would say that this is definitely on the menu. And, and I'm not saying unnatural in terms of, um, well, it's something that is created and constructed through its destruction, right? Through creating an artificial form of chaos, those who want to be in control of the materium, right? Because this is what the devil upright really represents here is being in control of this materium, artificially creating that chaos. So, uh, you know, if you are still in this mindset that there's only one or the other in terms of where we are going, then you are primed to be drawn into this experience as if there are only these two options. So it's so important that we identified as lightworkers or starseeds to understand the mission and understand how difficult this process really is and how long-term and how consistent and how focused we actually need to be. Now, when we look at this horizontal axis, as I've talked about many times, this is just the cause and effect relationship in a strictly third dimensional perspective. And so if you take out all the rest that's surrounding us, you're going to see the princess of wands is reversed. Oh, she is not very, she is not very dignified um, or very, you know, she can be very insatiable and cruel when she is in her reversal, right? Venus in the fire signs. But we also see at the heart of it, Venus or the princess of discs, right? Venus in the earth signs, which she's very comfortable in because she rules an earth sign. So at the heart of things here, um, there is a uh, a planting of a new seed, as we're going to see. And yes, there is some really powerful energy on its way with this eclipse. And it is going to break us open in many ways. But what we're going to see here surrounding this, and it's certainly our axis of power here, is that 
it has a lot to do with where our community really is, who we belong to, who belongs to us, where do we feel safe, where do we feel like ourselves, where do we feel surrounded by people that that are like-minded and on the same trajectory. Because on the surface and in our conscious awareness with this two of keys, um, it's going to seem like all is lost. It really is. And the treasure and the two of keys is actually a gift. It's in these all is lost moments where you realize the infinite part of who you are, where your light really comes from. And there's no amount of darkness that will ever extinguish light, right? If there is light, the darkness is not going to come and swallow it. That's not how it works. It is the extinguishing of light. It is the pulling away or the fading of light that allows darkness to um, seem like the only thing around. And of course, the darkness, the void is a big part of an eclipse because the moon, especially a solar eclipse, because the moon is passing in front of the sun relative to our position. It does have a ring of fire with this part. It's a partial solar eclipse. And one of the things I said on the Scorpio forecast, the new moon forecast for the Scorpio people is the path of totality for this eclipse is right down Russia, like Western Russia and Eastern Europe. Okay. That's where the path of totality really resides. And to just add more fuel to this fire, the, um, degree of this eclipse is within a degree orb of the ascendant of Vladimir Putin. So it's just important to realize that as much as we've realized this, oh, the people who are in, you know, instituting actions, right, that are putting, uh, you know, making moves on the board, so to speak, they are very aware of this energy. And they know that eclipses will distort what is other otherwise, um, a moment of intention for us to grow and to evolve through our own inner transmutation. So also accepting that we are crossing the pathway with our own soul's destiny and it will feel like everything is lost. It will seem like our entire life may be overturned and we're going to have, there's just some great guidance here um, in order to really assist us through this process. Now, many of us here are already aware of this, right? This is a long time coming. We've been aware, but remember Uranus is a big part of this whole conversation and specifically with the upcoming full moon lunar eclipse on the 8th of November, because um, it the moon will be conjunct junk to Uranus. Okay. And it's in Taurus, the, the same place where the North node is right now, the ruling sign, um, or the sign of rulership of Venus, for instance, as she comes into her detriment in Scorpio. So for as dignified and, and beautiful and harmonious as she's been in Libra and in Taurus for Venus to be in her detriment, we're really going to be tasked with, um, Remaining, remaining, remaining firm to our commitments to, um, you know, what is it that we want to not only invest ourselves in, right? But what are we having faith in, in terms of the outcome? What is going to be the return on investment? And it can get into some really dark places, especially Venus and Scorpio. She can really sink into all of those escapism, delusional things there and really sink into her own version of the swamp if we're not careful. Okay. So we're real, like I said, we really, this is a tall order now. Like we're really being called to the carpet and we will be broken open with this eclipse. And it'll be something that lingers until the spring, because that's the nature of eclipses. Even the soul needs to go into the underworld, not even just our own conscious awareness, but even the soul needs that time into hibernation and going into a Scorpio eclipse. Whew, it's going to be, it's going to really challenge us in terms of where our faith actually resides and if it will pull us through the darkest of times. Okay, so let's start looking at this reading one piece at a time, shall we? Now, we've seen the Princess of Wands many times. She has been a recurring character in this um, narrative of, and pattern of meaning that has been coming through the Starseed Ministry, especially the last couple of months. OK, so she's she's certainly not new to this conversation. When she's in her reversal, 
this is the inversion of an energy that's already very, very insatiable, very hungry, very uh, passionate and flaming. And, you know, she is just following the pathway of her own of her own fire, right? You have the the hearth fire that Vesta represents, by the way, which is in the sign opposite of Leo, which is Aquarius. That's very interesting, right? That the fire is in the sign of the thunderbolt, right? The uh, resonance of the collective consciousness. This is very important to consider. When the princess of wands is in her reversal like this. Um, there's greed, there's arrogance, there's superficial, uh, it's, it's superficial, right? Um, very theatrical, right? You can see some of these Leo themes in particular, as well as Aries, Leo, and even Sagittarius domineering, cruel, unstable, right? Uh, self-indulgent and faithless. Faithless is a word that continues to come out. And so in, in terms of this reversal, she really lacks true warmth of heart and unable to feel real compassion. Okay. So this is certainly explaining, um, or it, or I would say, it's, it's not necessarily explaining, although it does explain quite a few things, but it is setting up uh, an archetype or a framework here of many people who have been in this position here where they are, they are insatiable, they're greedy, they're arrogant, they think that there is, their way is the only way, and they're following their own pathway here of fire. And in fact, this this predatory cat, right? This tiger is wrapped around this princess and it actually kind of creates the antennae that she has that allows her to feel way into, um, the, you know, the pathway of where she is going. And so although this animal or this very Lyran, by the way, very Lyran symbol, the, 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 the large cats seem to be very connected to the Lyrans. She just has it wrapped around her too. And there is a playfulness with this card. Don't get me wrong that when it's upright, it is very playful. It's very joyful. It's enthusiastic, but in its reversal, it has got, it, it, it's very inverted. And we may have felt faithless. We have maybe felt kind of arrogant or greedy or just burning down everything in our wake, right? Um, just to get what we want. And Venus wants to get what she wants. That is absolutely the case, okay? So this is the causal factor that is coming into this situation, okay? But then in the heart of it is the princess of discs. So we have another Venus court card in the earth sign. This is a completely different energy, right? She is kind. She is generous. She is balanced in a lot of ways. Um, and it very much implies a new beginning because not only is the princess the end of the four court cards in this deck, at least, it's also the very end of the entire tarot is the princess of discs. And you can see her staff with this diamond structure on the end is very much planted in the ground. You see that the the, the trees are stripped bare. And you know what is representing that right now? Mars in Gemini, where it will station retrograde on the 30th of October. The Sabian symbol for 26 degrees Gemini is all of the trees that are stripped bare. Okay. So not only is this representing in the background, this, this aspect of the, the bones, the stripping down to the bark, right? Getting into the nuts and bolts of all of it. There's a sense of balance here, adeptness, right? The yin yang in this circle is the consciousness beyond the duality. Okay. Because when that circle starts spinning, those two factions that are separate, they look like they change into each other. Please remember this. This is going to be so important moving forward, not only just in the next six months, but in the years to come. I would say, because it's so easily 
able to, the pendulum is going to swing the other way. And if we are caught in the trap that there's only each side of the pendulum and not the energy of the pendulum swinging, we're going to get caught in the next round of traps. Okay. This is about really setting, um, you know, putting that staff into the ground. And you see, she's covered in furs. There's a sense of warmth and kindness and generosity, but also this sense of stripping down to the the bare essentials, that it's cold, that it's Capricornian, that it is at the time of the least amount of light. But she's got this smile on her face. And in fact, she's got, whoops, she's got the bullhorns, right? The Taurian bullhorns here. So there's there is creation, there's growth, there's birth, right? There's love and faith and kindness. Now, one of the things about this card is that because she is Venus in the earth signs, she is very dependent on outside influences because there's not a lot, there's no water, there's no real, there's no real air or fire. It's just earth and earth is very much impacted by all of the elements around it. So it's very difficult to adapt Okay, especially when you find yourself coming from a place of the princess of wands and its reversal where it is just, you know, it is truly just burning everything down. And maybe that is where we find ourselves in terms of everything stripped down to just the nuts and bolts, right? That we have, it has burned down, that the forest is burned down, that life has gone through this very, uh, our life either personally or in the macro, however we look at it, has gone through this process. And now we're here at the heart and we have a choice to make at the heart of things, of course, right? And being able to, um, you know, put that energy down into the earth, right? To really stabilize ourselves in a very fundamentally um, physical and material way, okay? But like I said, she's very easily influenced because there's all the elements surrounding her. So this adeptness with the yin yang in the cycle is really important this is consciousness beyond duality but this is also signaling that things are about to get very real right and we're about to come forward into a new creation and we're at the point where we can make a conscious decision and really cultivate kindness okay generosity as well okay so what we find in terms of our vertical axis of power. We're in the eight of roses. This is the Sangha, the spiritual community. Now, when you look at this card in depth, you'll see that there are a lot of different symbols here of different um, spiritual aspects, you know, different belief systems, different archetypes. And it, and it's really to signal, it's not so much what it is, but it's the quality of the community here. And the eight of roses, there's a very spiritual feeling based love quality that goes along with this. So where we find ourselves rooted, um, maybe it hasn't come fully up to the surface yet. This is something that is anchoring us um, in our spirit and in our It's in our spirit, anchoring us in our subconscious, anchoring us to um, our own core. It's time to join or rejoin those groups and that community that connects you with others of like mind. So there's there may be new friends on the way, especially because this is something that is in the subconscious, that it may not be fully manifested in your awareness yet, but very much here. Okay, this has got Cancerian vibes all through it, in, in my read at least. It may reawaken past life and karmic relationships here, right? Something coming to the surface. But this really is about, for me at least, how we are connected and our core is connected to this community of like-mindedness, the place where we feel we belong and that we give our energy to, that it gives back to us and it provides that protective cancerian type of energy, right? The nest in some ways. So this is very important important, especially because with Lilith in really the only Cancerian energy right now um, is Lilith in retrograde in those early degrees of Cancer, where it is we're still still working with, you know, the justification, our mind justifying and rationalizing, even though the decision has already kind of been made. So 
It may not be as obvious, but this is something that will really anchor and ground us. So the Starseed Fellowship is a perfect example, right? You know, everybody's in different places on their journey. Everybody's got a different understanding of the of the modalities, right? You know, we're doing a yoga program right now, which is not just for the Starseed Fellowship, but for those who are in it, um, it, you know, we have this yoga program. It's all levels right now. Everybody's at a different level with their understanding of astrology, with these, um, with the archetypal language of the tarot, um, where they're at in terms of their belief systems, um, where they're at in terms of organized religion and where they find their um, adherence to those things. We're all in different places. But one thing is clear is that we have prov- creating a container that is um, non-judgmental and thoughtful and cares about each other. So I would invite you to consider this in terms of where is your core stabilization? Do you have this community? Because if you are relying on those outer structures, as we've talked about, it's going to be very difficult um, for you. And you may find new people coming into your uh, experience that are really wanting and ready for this as well. So that's something else to consider. So when we move on to what's in our conscious awareness, like I said, the two of keys, the treasure. So it's called the treasure. But as you can see, this person's room has been completely upended, right? Everything has been destroyed from their perspective. So great law or disappointment, right? And 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 it, it's going to seem like everything has been upended. We've lost everything in a very material way, right? Now look at the Princess of Discs where that staff is really situated. It's situated down. It's in the ground, the root system, which is the Sangha, this community of like-minded people, your Cancerian nest, whatever it is. Now, the Two of Keys is very material and in the destruction, in the loss, and especially with this eclipse tomorrow and what it represents being broken open in some ways, it will seem like in our conscious awareness and where our power is really released that we have lo- there's a great loss, okay? And a great physical material loss. Um, and I think that... It's important to realize, number one, you see the little chest, that's the treasure, the light that is revealed to all of us that is infinite. You see that the lantern is above the person's head. Again, the light. You actually see out the window, strangely enough, a crescent moon, which is coming right? We're going to have a new moon at the eclipse, but then it's going to start waxing and it'll be a crescent moon. So there is more to come. There is, there is something that is revealed to us here, but it will seem at first, or maybe will continue to seem like a great loss or disappointment. So the chest represents the part of us that is filled with light, something that can never be taken. No matter how many AI algorithms are written, no matter how much data they, they siphon from us, no matter how much they try to squeeze us, no one can ever take this. They can't. They can try and they can certainly convince us that we don't have this. Um, but that's just part of their program, right? To convince, they're convinced that they there is no soul. Therefore, they want us to be convinced there isn't. This is going to it certainly backfire because this is what is going to be revealed to people through the eclipse and, and the loss that comes from being broken open, Okay. And, and your vulnerability really being shown to you. So focusing on what's wrong or what you're lacking will perpetuate your sense of victimization. Please keep that in mind as well, right? Because there's lots of unexpected things. And like I said in the Scorpio forecast, with the full moon, lunar eclipse, with, with Uranus in the mix... Things are not going to go the way people think, and and it's going to be across the board, right? The sudden shock and all is definitely going to come out with that situation. So just keep in mind that it's very easy to slip back into that victim mentality, and the full moon in Aries conjunct Chiron really brought that to the surface for us. Where do we feel like a victim? Where have we been perpetuating our victimhood by outsourcing um, the work we need to be doing within ourselves, right? And it's there's nothing wrong with that, right? But we all do it. And it's something that's really needs to be addressed individually. So 
Now let's get to whew, the devil, right? Our 15, our Capricorn card. Okay. Now, the, how are we going to break the cycle? That is the, the main question for this energy. So how do we break the cycle? Because this card really represents the temptation, the bondage, the oppression of the system. Um, we free ourselves by facing our own pain, right? Uh, we may overindulge ourselves and that comes at a cost, right? Because that's the nature of the materium is nothing is free. Nothing is free. No matter what anybody tries to tell you, especially in your spiritual work, if people try to like shame you into giving yourself away for free, they are gaslighting you. And, um, they don't understand how this reality actually works. So, um, or they do, and that's the whole reason they're gaslighting you. So you want to change your perspective to see the light, just like that two of keys up here. Um, it's going to be very easy to fall back in to the victimhood and I'm trapped here. I'm trapped. You know, all these beings seem to be trapped in these two cells that are going through meiosis, right? And rather than feeling like a trap and some of the elites, they they are trapped. They do feel trapped because they will not allow themselves the connection back to their infinite, um, their inf their infinite self, their higher self, their connection to God, whatever, whatever way you conceptualize it. So they are trapped. And so their way of dealing with that is probably to create this artificial chaotic thing in order to control everything. It's very materialistic and it is a trap. That is, that is the true definition of sa Satanism is the materialistic, the strictly materialistic viewpoint. Um, and if that's the case, then you do, you are trapped, right? And so this is, this is coming. And what we are being tasked with is to change our perspective, to see the light, not to see the material, materialistic destruction and previous choices may have put us in unhealthy situations. We have to be very real with ourselves about this. And here comes back that princess of wands, right? Previous choices have put us in unhealthy situations and we have to reap what we have sown. And if we have found ourselves being greedy, arrogant, completely uncaring about anybody, no compassion whatsoever. Many people um, are going through this and have gone through this and will continue to go through this. They are going to experience this in its fullness. Okay. Now, um, but again, how do you break the cycle? That's the real question. Now, here comes our tower moment as well as part of this outcome card and it's in reversal. So normally this would be like blind destruction, right? Rather than having the effect of, of breaking up those old structures. Now, <laughs> Saturn and Uranus are still in a square. Now that Saturn is direct, it's going to be moving away from Uranus. So it's going to get less impactful over time, but it's still very much there. And the fact that Saturn has moved direct is showing again, you know, how strong are these structures here the, of the, of the collective consciousness that has uh, crystallized within your own experience, right? And what is it? Is it something that will be destroyed or is it something that is outside of the realm of destruction? I think we're going to find out, right? Now, what will you build on this foundation? That's the question with the tower card. And ultimately, it's an upheaval. It's a wake up call. It's transformation, destruction of old values. But when it's reversed, there are lots of different ways that we resist this. The ego gets in the way pretty easy with the devil involved here, um, ignoring the wake up call an unwillingness to evolve, right? Clinging to the old and blind destruction. So that's all part of this process. And certainly this eclipse that again is going to break us open. It's part of what is going on right now for the soul work. But without all of the guidance surrounding this and you just see the uh, horizontal third dimensional axis, it is pretty brutal, I would say. And so everything surrounding it is exactly what is, it's exactly what is necessary. It is exactly what is right to bring us to a higher awareness and to truly evolve now. And I would say quite literally is initiating us, right? So number 14, the initiation and the Count St. Germain now in more kind of like new agey perspectives, not to like put too much emphasis on it. The idea here is that St. Germain is kind of the patron um, master of the Aquarian age, right? So the Pisces age, we're still in it. 
we're still going to be in the Piscean age for, I think, a while, right? And so you had Jesus as the Christ was the um, avatar or the conduit for that Piscean age where um, we find ourselves in full communion with all that is and what that represents. And that really brings about compassion, unconditional love, forgiveness, right? Because what, you know, what I do to you, I do unto myself. And that's really what the Christ energy represents, at least, at least to me. And coming into this age of Aquarius, which is, I'd say we still got to get through Pluto and Aquarius. So we got some time um, still in the Piscean age, but we are coming into this. And St. Germain is is the conduit for this Aquarian age, which is much more in the third eye cons- um collective higher consciousness, the resonance of our voice together and wh- what kind of power it has, right? So this is about our initiation, and this is the guidance that's surrounding the Sangha or the spiritual community. This is happening now. This is the time for initiation. So we will lose lower vibration relationships and situations. That's been happening, right? But this is really bringing it to this kind of distilled, very karmic point with the eclipses. The disciplines you create now, and I would even go further and say the connections that you are making now in your spiritual community, in your family, the, you know, the place where you feel safe and you belong, those things are going to lift your service to the world and they're going to carry you through this process of initiation, okay? And along with this, which I really love, is the ladybug. You know, be open to receive. You know, there is goodness and there is abundance, right? And the more we project that out into the the field, the more that it is going to be reflected back to us as our experience. So, but we have to be willing to receive it. If we are, if our ego is getting in the way, if we are in, um, if we keep pushing um, the wake up call away, if we keep hitting the snooze button, um, then we are not open to receive, right? And this is where resentment comes in and, and the resistance kind of just finds a feedback loop. So the ladybug is saying, be willing to receive and also being observant and careful about your focus because manifestation is happening instantaneously. Okay. We have to be very focused and diligent. All this Virgo energy that we had had was really leading us up here. A gratitude practice is pretty important um, right now. Ask for what you want and then imagine that you already have it and focus on that feeling, that feeling of you having what it is you truly want, your heart's desire in your imagination, right? That's the essence. That's and that's the place where this happens, your imagination. You focus on the feeling and this is how you are attracting those manifestations to you, right? But you have to be open to receive and many people are not going to be open to receiving. They are going to hit the snooze button on their wake up call. Even the people who think that they are awake and that's all of us, right? So just be aware of this as well, um, what this represents. Ooh, I love the ladybug, right? So then, whew, the roadrunner. This is about, number one, keeping a sense of humor and not taking things too seriously. And in relation to this two of keys, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like keep your humor about what seems like you know, as a great loss or disappointment. But also, too, the roadrunner, it's a bird. And it's a bird that lives on the ground. And so... Uh, this is that adeptness of having the bird's eye view with boots on the ground. And it's about having this sense of humor, not taking it too seriously, being able to see the perspective from that really large perspective, but also know that you are right here right now and being fully present. And it's okay to feel what you're feeling about these things, right? You don't want to just cut yourself off from your own feelings, but you also want to take back your power in how you respond to these situations. And the Roadrunner is a great spiritual guide and animal guide for this process. And look, I mean, this is also a returning player in in our Starseed ministry the last couple of weeks. The balance of the seven forces that remember that justice and 
uh, reciprocity or energetic experiences that we have to apply our knowledge of who we are and I would say that Venus and the Sun in that superior solar conjunction was a big beautiful moment for this balance so bring yourself back to this place if you're really struggling here knowing that it's about finding the balance between your light and your dark the alchemy that exists between the polarity of ourselves that we're experiencing that is going to really allow us to move through this time with some measure of grace and understanding and not to feel trapped and not to just ignore the wake up call. Okay, my friends. So man, whew, really, really powerful reading today. Okay. So next I want to bring up Next, I want to bring up the the chart for today just to whoops, just to get an idea here of um, what to expect and also to um, just and you may already be able to hear it, but they're already at work here. So I'm going to uh, hopefully wrap this up pretty soon so that it's not too distracting. OK, so um, let's see here. And I appreciate everybody being flexible and willing to just roll with the punches. I mean, I talked about it already that I'm not surprised that this is all happening as Pluto basically is stationed direct and I'm having massive uh, overhaul of the area of my house where you do your cleansing because that's a big part of this conversation too is that cleansing spiritually, emotionally, energetically. That astral hygiene is absolutely essential. So let's look at this chart for today and know that we're coming into the eclipse as of tomorrow morning. Okay. So there's a lot, you know, the big pieces here, at least for me, are the fact that the sun and Venus have now moved into Scorpio. They're traveling very close together. They're still in the same degree that, um, and they're in the degree now that the new moon eclipse is actually going to happen. The full degree, right? The Sabian symbol of this delicate bottle of perfume that breaks open and the scent, um, starts wafting out and it's in the scent, Ooh, you know, how the olfactory sense is one of the uh, is one of the most powerful because not only it, it the olfactory nerve is like right here you know it's like right here in the front of the brain um, kind of near the pineal gland. And if, um, if, you know, in certain types of other animals, like whales, for instance, I've learned this, that, um, and, and some of you may know more about this than I do, um, especially if you work with animals or you've had any kind of like biology or marine biology, but whales have a gland very similar to the pineal that allows them to track the magnetic frequencies in the field in order to to migrate successfully right because male uh, whales dolphins they will migrate around to different parts of the planet throughout the, the throughout the year and they use this gland well it's very similar to the olfactory uh uh nerves and the cranial or yeah the cranial nerves that are related to our olfactory sense which is our sense of smell and so it's very ancient and it's very um something that we can't really put our finger on in terms of rational thought it's something that and we all know this experience right a smell that will take us back to a point in time um so directly and seamlessly that it seems so magical right and so the idea of the the lingering smell like the wafting smell is going to be something that is so impactful to us at a spiritual level in a subconscious level something that is deeply penetrating that it'll again will with lilith involved down here in early cancer that is like you know, there is this drive to really rationalize all of this and that we've already made a decision in terms of our own root system, our own sense of where we belong. It's already happened. And so with the eclipse in particular, this is already, it's already in the cosmic code. So it's, it's important to realize that we will feel challenged and feel this sense of like, I have to like you know, justify this and rationalize this and just, you know, allowing yourself to just feel into that and knowing that the space that is created there is where the true power is because that space is where our divine spark is allowed and able to inhabit. So 
Venus and Sun are in this degree right now today. And of course, Venus is going to move on past the Sun and the new moon eclipse, you know, the ring of fire is going to be at this degree. And so to also consider you know, maybe where you had belong, you, there, there's going to be memories, right? Nostalgia, cherished things that are going to come up, things that you maybe not even realized how you, you know, maybe taken for granted, um, perhaps things that you never realized were so um, cherished until they're gone, right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Boy, and and we're all going to go through it, okay? Like all of us. So it's not like I'm here, you know, on a soapbox like many people will <laughs> tempt to do here. Uh, we're all going to go through it. And we're all going through this truly together. But it's very potent and strong. And to remember that the smell, that olfactory sense, that part of our endocrine system that is outside of our rational thought is going to be activated by what has what is wafting away from the part of ourselves that's broken open with this eclipse. And again, the fact that it's going to stretch out for the six months of, of any eclipse cycle just goes to show that this is a deeply embedded process and to be patient with yourself and to be aware of that. Because if you're expecting you know, rapid fire change or something to, you know, if you're expecting something to like, it's going to be great and everything's going to go according to plan and everything is going to go back to normal or not even to normal, but, um, you know, especially with the midterm elections, really give yourself the chance to, to, uh, identify and embody some of this, especially while Venus is in the early degrees of Scorpio. She's still much, she still got the, the, the connection to Libra. Um, but it won't last long. And the further she gets in the Scorpio, the deeper she gets into her own swamp. And this is where she, uh, we find ourselves using, you know, intoxicants. Um, and that can be actual chemicals, you know, drugs, alcohol, that can be down the rabbit hole, right? Um, that's something that can feel like it's, it becomes a distraction. And really what it does is kind of, you know, the cloud of delusion is so easily, uh, tapped into with Venus and Scorpio. But this is part of the commitment to this process, knowing that you're going to sink into the seven layers of hell here um, in order to bring the truth back to the surface, okay? Just like the lil um, the the uh, lotus blossom, right? That the, the root system goes down through the, wa the murky water to reach the mud. And this is a good way to consider this, okay? And to um, use your feels, um, but not identifying with them entirely. Okay. So this is today, the 24th, right? Getting ready for this eclipse. And remember a balsamic moon, it's not a good time to make like decisions and to take a lot of action. You just want to kind of feel into everything that's transpired during this whole lunar cycle and be aware of everything that is closing out as the moon is getting darker and darker and is at its darkest really. And the only way we'll even see the moon is by way of the ring of fire around the solar, um, around the sun for this partial solar eclipse. And this is like a portal. Like if there was ever a portal, this is, this is one, right? Where you jump into that ring of fire. It actually is this tiny little bit of light. That's like, oh, there's the portal I'm jumping into to my infinite self. Okay. That's something to consider as well. And we talked about Mars and Gemini. It's going to station retrograde on the 30th. It is stripping it all down bare. And this is where we can put our action and our um, initiative is for our own subjective experience is in the stripping away down to the pure selfhood, because this is where Mars is going to then station retrograde and turn. A lot of people are going to turn on themselves, right? Or turn on others, right? The pendulum is going to swing back the other way. And it's, you're going to see some really disgusting behavior coming out of the other side of things. Okay. And to not allow yourself to get pulled into the drama of it all, right? There's that Venus in the air, fire signs that, that princess of wands in its reversal. Um, if you have been feeling arrogant and then there's a little bit of a winning type of thing, you're going to see people act really just, oh, it's not going to be pretty. Let's just put it that way. 
I don't anticipate it. So keep yourself out of that fray as much as you can. And the moon just moves through Libra today. She's going to meet with um, she's going to meet with Mercury, right? Allowing us to, um, you know, subconsciously tap into the, the messaging and the messenger in terms of, uh, giving to those who are thirsting for the infinite, our ability to tap into that. And then having this sense of giving those who thirst for it, giving them the opportunity, Hey, let me show you what I've done, right? Um, you may find yourself communicating that, or at least feeling or getting that message in some ways as the moon meets Mercury today. The moon is also going to um, come in into a trine to Saturn as a, you know, um, it, now that it's direct, right? And and facing the consequences of solidifying our sense of authority, determination, focus, goal-oriented uh, behavior, facing the consequences emotionally of what that means. Again, we're standing firm and there's going to be a whole new level of shit storm around this and we will be well advised to tap into the sense of this is what it's this is what it means to stand in our power and this is what it means to be able to gather all resources in order to 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 manage that which will um, I don't know, manage the, the, the forest fire, right? Um, you know, the karmic visitation or the tower moment is here, but we might be able to actually um, manage it in some ways, at least within ourself. Um, and that, and the moon does really represent how we makes, you know, how we f find ourselves, me how do I say this? Find ourselves, um, Oh man, I just totally lost it. Uh, find ourselves. Uh, the word is escaping me right now, my friends, um, in terms of being able to adapt. Oh, there it is. <laughs> adapt to the world around us is through the moon. Okay. Jeez. Um, yeah, this is going to be all of these, all of these, um, all of these larger transits, especially all of the Libra transits with the sun and Mercury and the, and Venus, how they made the trine to Saturn, how they made the trine to Mars, how they made the square over to Pluto. All of that's going to be this wrap up period with the moon crossing these points today to bring it out. And so just throughout the day, it's going to be making all of those connections again about our sense of balance, our adeptness, um, what justice and reciprocity within ourselves really means. And you may not see it on the outside, but it's up to us each to adapt to whatever's happening to establish that balance within ourselves. And then the moon is going to, the last real transit it's going to happen here, um, besides the fact that it's going to come into a... Um, a trine with Mars conjunct Arcturus, by the way, is that the moon then is going to come into a square with Pluto uh, by the end of today and then is going to go void, of course, meaning that there are no major transits of the moon until she moves into the next sign. And that is going to be Scorpio. And the only real transit it's going to make before the eclipse is that the Scorpio moon by tomorrow morning or late tonight is going to have um, a quincunx, a quincunx with uh, Jupiter in the zero degrees of Aries. And so uh, as we are taking that tour bus to hell... <laughs> And really feeling into it, um, the adjustment we have to make in terms of, you know, the impulse to be um, something more than ourselves, being part of something else. That's, we're just going to have to make an adjustment in that moment. And that's something that um, will probably be a very necessary moment of like, whoa, you know, this doesn't fit at all leading into the eclipse because Jupiter in this first degree of Aries like this, right? The woman rising out of the ocean, the impulse to be, um, it's its like the, the bellows have been squeezed all the way together. And so, um, yes, there's that integration, but we don't see necessarily yet what it's going to be for, which is where the bellows open back up and we take in a huge breath. And that's going to be something that happens much more into, uh, into December, like... Um, Jupiter stations direct in Pisces around Thanksgiving here in the U.S., right, around the 23rd or so. 
there'll be a new moon in Sagittarius. And then when Jupiter comes back into Aries in its direct motion, that is where we're really going to come up, right? And so right now you may feel like that you're kind of getting dragged back down into yourself. And the moon in Scorpio at that same position is, is having us feel like, well, this is supposed to be widening our experience, but all I do is feel like I'm just sinking here in terms of how I understand myself. The adjustment in this discomfort is where the alchemy happens. So that's coming into tomorrow leading up to the eclipse. So my friends, I feel like um, we really came to some kind of at least a stopping point for today. So I'm going to leave it there. A couple things I want to share with you in case you're not on my email list or you're not following Catalyst Energies on social media. Uh, number one, w the eclipse readings I'm offering now. So this is an astrological forecast for you for the next six months. So it's $99. You can book it directly and pay through CatalystEnergies.net. It's on the homepage. It gives you all the direction that you need. And this looks at your natal chart, your progressions, your relevant star seed markings, and gives you a an idea of the next six months in terms of your soul's evolution. So that's something that you can uh, book from CatalystEnergies.net, and that's in the description box below if you're interested. This is still open enrollment, so we're a week in. And for those of you who are waiting for the next uh, round of videos with the poses, thank you for being patient. Um, it's just been quite a weekend. And so today will be um, a much larger video with the full sun salutation available for you. But this is open enrollment. So if you want to join now on this sliding scale, you'll get all of the videos that I've already posted to this group for this 21 day program. And I'm also adding in not just the vinyasa poses, but for those who are interested in restorative yoga. I'm also af um, I'm also giving uh, modifications with restorative poses as well. So if you're feeling in your body that you need more of a restorative type of practice and the, the, the more the more active vinyasa is not working for you right now or you want to have both options for whenever, this is something that um, I'm offering as well. So again, catalystenergies.net, you link in the description box, it'll take you to where you need to go um, in order to sign up and register for this. And of course, um, the Catalyst Classroom, the second session is going to be released this week. We've already talked about stellar physics, um, astrophysics, solar weather, how to read all of that stuff, what the anatomy and the structure of the sun is, how a star is formed. I talk about the difference between nuclear fusion theory and the electric universe theory. So session two, we're getting into the mythology, um, cross-cultural mythology around the sun. Um, we're going to talk about the astrology. So it's the sun and the signs and the houses. Use some demo charts to give you an idea of how to read the sun in the chart. And I'll go over the nature of eclipses um, from both the astronomical perspective and reading an eclipse in the chart as well. So you can go to catalystenergies.net um, or you can just go to the link in the description box that says sign up for the Catalyst Classroom and it'll take you to Subscribe Star. You subscribe for $5 a month and you are getting either content like this every other week or access to our Starseed Fellowship Zoom call for $5 a month. So and just so you know that when you use those third party platforms, I don't get $5 a month. I get a cut of that because they take their cut. So it's actually, um, whoa, it's actually a lot less. So not a lot less, but I'm just letting you know that this is quite a deal and I want to keep it affordable because I know where we're going um, with things. So that's something if you're interested in, that is something you can take at your own pace. I post the videos. I have slides that you are able to view at your own pace and ask questions at the end of the uh, the sessions, right? Session four is a live Q&A on Zoom where we go into deep dive on everything that I've covered. So that's all I really want to share with you in terms of promotional material. So thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate each and every one of you so very much. Um, like I said, the Catalyst Astrology Report is no longer going to be available publicly. That's something that is going to only be available to my subscriber or membership base and on a um, one-time purchase availability, you know, through my website. So if you're really into the Astrology Report in particular, um, you may want to consider that. Also, 
I still will be offering the new moon and full moon forecasts for the signs of that lunar cycle as I've been doing. So that's something that's still going to be freely available to everyone. So thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate each and every one of you for doing the work, taking the time, being focused, being thoughtful, being compassionate, having an open heart and a strong heart because we really all need it right now. So until next time, take care, everyone. Have a have a really deep and awesome eclipse and I'll see you next time.